right, so the next step then is to make these titles clickable so that we can go to another page for our blog post. So the first thing we need to do is make a route for this. And we can define a bunch of different helpers in our routes file for the different types of HTTP requests we might want. So we can do get, we can do post, oops, post, we can do put, we can do patch, and we can do delete requests. And these are going to then um, take the request type and then filter by the URL. So for a get request, we might want slash blog underscore posts and the ID. And then we want to send this to the blog posts show action. And that's going to allow us to look up an individual blog post by the ID that's in a URL. And the ID is a special variable starting with that colon Rails knows that this is going to be a variable. It's going to change. It could be letters, it could be numbers, it could be hyphens and you know any kind of characters without uh, slashes, obviously. Those are going to then end up as the ID parameter in our controller so we can look up our database record and visit blog posts one and blog post number two. And each one of these will set the ID value to one or two or whatever you type in there. And it will send it to that controller and we can look it up. So to build this, we're going to add a show action and we're going to look up an individual blog post. So I'm going to not make this plural. It will be singular blog post. And we will look up blog post.find and we can use params ID. So you'll notice this ID matches the ID in the URL that we defined and Rails will automatically parse that out, assign it to the params and params comes from application controller. Uh, the action controller base class will give us a params method that returns us all of the parameters for the request. We can look up the blog post using that ID, which will be like number one or number two or whatever. And assign that to a variable, and then this variable we can use in our views. So if we make a new file, show.html.erb, we can have an h1 here, and we can use our blog post variable, print out the title, and we can also print out the blog post body. So on our index, we had an array of blog posts, which is why this was plural. So we need to go through each one of those in order to print them all out. But on our show action, we know that we have just an individual blog post, which means we can directly interact with its title and body columns in the database. So this is going to then allow us to visit slash blog posts slash one. And it says, Okay, we could not find a blog post with ID of number one. And if we look at our blog post table, this is really handy, on errors in your Rails app, there's a web console here at the bottom, this gray box, and you can run code in it. Uh, and you can say blog post.all, and we can look at the database IDs. I have deleted blog post number one, so we only have blog post number two and number three to be able to look up. So if we type two in here, it will find the database record and it will print out the title and the body, which is great. Now, when we looked up a blog post that had an invalid ID that we could not find in the database, Rails gave us this active record, record not found error message. And it says, couldn't find blog post with ID number one, which makes sense. We don't have one in our database with number one. Um, so what we can do is that we can actually rescue from that error and we can tell Rails to redirect to the root path. So when you define routes in your Rails app, the routes like the root route will actually be given a name that you can use and that gives you these methods like root path and root URL that you can use in your Ruby code and your views to redirect and this will basically generate a path for us. So the output of root path is going to just print out a string of slash. So that is what root path generates. And the reason we use these helper methods instead of putting the routes directly is you can customize these routes 
And you could tell blog posts to maybe be slash blog in the ID instead of blog posts. But your Ruby code could stay all the same and you could just customize the routes to change how it looks and you wouldn't have to edit any of your Ruby code. Uh, and we'll talk about that stuff in the future. But for now, if you were to go to blog posts with some invalid ID, it could be characters, not in a primary key in the database. What will happen is Rails will try to look up a record in the database matching L-A-K-S-J-D-L-A-K, yada, yada, yada. It will say that's not valid. There's no record with that ID. And it will raise an error and we'll rescue from that error and we'll tell it, the browser, go back to the homepage because we don't know what you're talking about. Someone linked to a page that was invalid. So rather than giving them an error message, we can send them to a useful page instead. So that sends us right back to the homepage. But we can still access the valid blog posts by going to blog post slash two. So that's kind of handy uh, feature that Rails gives you and you can easily handle errors and send people to another location. So Rails uh, is going to generate those different requests. So for example, let's refresh our browser. And if we make sure we're looking at all of the requests that are made, we can see that we went to blog post slash two. And I like to look at the headers tab first. Um, you'll see that request URL was slash blog post slash two, and we received a 200 OK response from the server. So when we go to an invalid one, like number one, that does not exist in the database, what we'll see is that we can look at this request and we will get the headers general. We went to blog post number one, but the server returned us a 302 found response. And that is the redirect to uh, root path that is generating that 302 redirect for us. And then the location header in the response is where the root path is telling us to go to. So redirect to this location means return a 302 found and give it the location header. And the browser knows, okay, we will go over there instead. Thank you very much. And it takes you to that page and makes that request. And that one goes and asks your Rails app, hey, can we get the home page? And Rails says, you sure can, here's a 200 okay response. So it's helpful, very, very helpful to open up the network tab in your browser to look at these requests that are happening. And you can also do the same thing in your Rails terminal in or your Rails logs in where you're running your Rails server. So we can see the exact same thing here. From the Rails side, we tried to get blog posts. Number one, parameters was ID, was number one. We looked that up in the controller with this uh, find query, and it looks for a blog post with number one, and that was running on line seven. And then we were redirected to the homepage because we raised the error and we redirected. Now, if we scroll up, we can actually see that error from the active record not found that we did previously before we rescued, and it will tell you exactly where that failed. It said blog post controller line seven in the show action could not find the blog post with ID number one. So your Rails logs are gonna be very helpful for watching what's going on, checking the responses, making sure the errors were handled properly, and that everything is working as you expect it to. So this is our second action that we got working, which is great. So the next step is we need our index to be able to have links to click and go to the other page for the show action. So inside of our index.html.erb, there's a helper that Rails provides called link to, and you give it the text you wanna display and then you give the route that you wanna send them to. So we could say slash blog posts and we can interpolate the blog post ID. And that's going to put the database ID in this little path. And if we refresh our page, we now have links. And if we inspect these, you will see that this creates an anchor tag with the href of slash blog posts and the ID number two. And it prints out the text inside of the anchor tag as the blog post title. So we can click on this one. We gotta go see Hello World 2. 
which is ID number three. The first one is blog post ID number two, and all that works great. But this is not normally how we write code in our Rails applications because if you decided that this should be instead just slash blog, you'd have to update every reference to that in your code base. So that is kind of a pain. So in our routes file, when we define this get route, we can actually give it a name and we can say as blog post. And this is going to allow us to reference like our root, we can say blog post path and we can say blog post URL. Both of these are gonna require you to pass in that ID. So number one or number two or whatever the ID is, that will know to put it in this first variable spot. And these are going to generate slash blog posts slash one. And this other one's going to generate the same thing, but it's gonna be a, the entire URL. So it'll look at the current request and it'll say, okay, you're on localhost colon 3000 slash blog post slash one. So the URL is useful if you ever need to include the full protocol and domain and port and everything else um, in there. A lot of times in our Rails apps, we'll just use path because it's simpler and relative and we don't need the entire domain in there. You might need the domain in there if you're working with subdomains or linking to another website or whatever, but we're linking to our own website so we can leave that out. So this gives us that helper method where we can then say, instead of blog post ID being um, hard-coded, we can instead say blog post path and give it that ID and just use Ruby to generate that route for us. Refreshing the page, nothing changed because that is the exact same equivalent output that we have. So that's cool. But we can also go a step further and remove the ID because Rails is smart enough to see, oh, you gave us an active record object. We see that it has an ID. We're going to put that in the, the URL for you and you don't even have to tell us which one to use. We know to use the ID, which is awesome. So we can even simplify that a bit further. Another cool thing that you can do is you can remove blog post path entirely because Rails is going to see, oh, you gave us an active record object, good, but this is a blog post. So that means that you probably want to take the blog post path and put the ID in there because you gave us a specific blog post. So now we can link the blog post title to the blog post. We don't even have to tell Rails what routes we want because it knows how to figure it out from the object that you give it. So we can refresh the page again and these work exactly the same. And this is all magically happening um, because Rails has some cool things. So what it will do is it will look and say, oh, you have blog posts with the ID of one. Well, it's a blog post model. So let's look up the route called blog post and we'll assume that that's the one you wanna send it to. So as long as you have one named that, we will generate that route. So it is doing this magic behind the scenes, but it's not really magic. It just knows you probably wanted to go here because you gave us this object. We'll go do that for you and you don't have to worry about it. So it saves you a lot of time because you can worry about what your application needs to do instead of the nitty gritty details. And that's one of the things that I really love about Rails is that it can help generate this code for you that you don't have to worry about. And it saves you a lot of time and you can use your brain to focus on what you're trying to build and not these little nuances. So that's a pretty cool example of something you can do with Rails. So here's a little sneak peek behind the scenes how this works inside of Rails. Every active record model like blog post has a attribute called model name and model name provides a bunch of ways to convert the class name into things that you might need. So for example, here's the human version of it where it puts a space after the first word and then it lowercases all the rest of the words. So a blog post doesn't need to be one word capitalized like this. Um, it can be that for humans. Then for any collections, like our database table name, we want the plural version of it, um, and that is the plural version, and it knows the singular version, and it can use this stuff in order 
to generate those routes. It can use it to talk to your database and it will implicitly uh, basically know we want to use these words given this name and you don't have to do anything about that unless you would like to override it and change it to uh, a different name. You can go and override these things as needed, but by default, everything is going to follow that convention and it will be just kind of like magic as some people like to say, but really it's not magic at all. It's just they've done the work for you and you don't have to. So here we have a visible blog where we can look at the blog posts, we can uh, see each individual one, but we need to be able to create blog posts uh, and edit them and delete them as needed because it's really kind of a pain to work with our blog right now. You'd have to go into the console to create something directly in the database. So what I would like to do next is allow us to create blog posts, edit them, and destroy them. And then afterwards, we can lock them down with a user account to make sure that only the users who are authorized to do this are allowed to do that. So let's dig into creating new blog posts and editing them and destroying them next.